Hi there, this video is all about what are your recording options within Google Meet for distance learning. And in a previous video, I had set up a calendar event. And within that calendar event, I had set up some conferencing so that way students could participate. And then you share the link out to the event so that way students can get to it. And you can share that through your learning management system. In our case, we're using Google Classroom. So I can copy that code, give it to students, and then they can participate. But this isn't so much about that portion. So I'm going to get into a meet session here. Camera's starting up. Hello. And I'm going to hit join now. And so then as students hit their join button, then they would be able to participate along with me. All right. And so I'm going to talk about what are your recording options. In the previous video, I had mentioned that you could just use the camera that's directly on your device. That's a simple way to do it. But you also have some other options and I'm going to talk about those. So some other options are what if you have a document camera? So I have two different models here. I have a hover cam and I have an IPVO document camera. Either one is appropriate. Most teachers in my school district have this model. And so what I'm going to do is utilize this one this time. And so let me plug it in and I'll show you what happens when you do that. When you first plug it in, what it'll do is it'll automatically default, at least on this Chromebook. And this is what Chromebook my teachers have as well. This is the Lenovo 500D. And what it'll do is it will automatically switch to the IPVO Ziggy. Now, if you have it plugged in and you're wanting to switch, so that way you could use a document camera and utilize whatever book or text you have underneath because Quite frankly, you could just set a book underneath there. Let me rotate the head around on this camera. Most of these document cameras allow you to do so. So now I have it flipped around. And then what you can also do is you can also change it. So that way you are able to change which camera you're looking at at that moment. So if you had already plugged it in, here's how you would go ahead and change which camera it is. Go up here to video. I went from settings to video and you can switch which camera you are utilizing at that time. So now I'm back to this camera. You can also change which microphone is being used. So you can test this out, see which one you like better, and then you'd be able to record. All right. So I'm going to switch this back to the Ziggy camera, give you an idea. And you'll notice that it zoomed in and out there. On top of the Ziggy camera, you have some buttons. You have a light blue button. Uh, this one it has an S and a C on it. One's for static and one's for continuous. If you do continuous, sometimes it zooms in and out. Right now I'm not dealing with the issue of something zooming in and out. So not a big deal because I have it on static. But if you have it on that continuous button, it'll zoom in and out until it gets the correct focus. To make it to force focus, you have a dark blue button and that will make it focus in that moment. All right, and so if you have things blurry, you can press that button one time, it'll refocus. The other thing you can do is you have a couple of exposure buttons and most cameras have these types of things. Um, they have the option of adjusting the focus or forcing the focus, stopping the autofocus and also changing the exposure. And some even have lights like my hover cam one has actually a light on it and you can adjust those buttons accordingly. So that way, when you're ready to present to your students, you're ready to go. So then when I'm ready to present to my students and I want to record the whole session so that way they can participate from a distance, maybe they can't get to the live portion. So right now I could have students in there going along with me. And then when I'm ready to record, I can hit record, hit accept. And on the top left, it'll say that it is recording. There we go. So right now it would be recording this and my recording would go to Google Drive and then it could be shared with the students later. To stop the recording, I can just go right back to the settings and hit stop recording. And now I'm done. Okay, so that's really option two because option one was to use the camera that is directly in front of me. So I'll switch that back and switch to the camera that is on the device so that way you can see this one. Okay, I'm going to unplug my Ziggy camera because I don't need that right now. Your third option is to use another tool. Like, for example, I have Google Keep here, which would allow you to draw directly on the screen. And 
to do that, what you would do is you would actually use the present now option. Now, before I now to do that, what I need to do is activate the recording feature on Google Meet before I start doing the lesson. So that way I can save it for later. So I'm going to activate the recording. Except up on the top left, it'll tell me when I'm recording. There we go. I'm recording. And then if I'm ready to introduce the topic and I'm ready to share my Google Keep screen up here, then what I can do is I can hit present now. Hit your entire screen, select my screen, hit share. When I do that, now it'll say you are presenting your screen. You give it a little bit of time to swirl. It'll let you know when it's ready. And then what happens is it'll indicate to you when you switch tabs that you're presenting to everyone on the call. So then I can X out of that so that way it's out of the way. But Google Keep is fantastic because we actually have in my school district styluses with our Lenovo 500Es, and that allows us to easily draw on the screen like so. You could give a little lesson, you have some different pens you can work with. And within those menus, you have uh, some different options. You even have like a nice little highlighter tool so you can highlight over the top of something. Then when I'm all done, I could close this a couple of ways. I could stop the recording now or I could stop presenting. And now that I've stopped presenting, then it goes back to the camera. So that way I'm able to talk to the students. Then I can stop my recording and it'll be saved in Google Drive. So that way I can share it with my students. It's a great feature. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where they go in Google Drive real quick, just so that way you have a reminder. You may have seen my previous video just to show that they do reside in Google Drive under a space called Meet Recordings in a folder. Let me scroll down here. Here's my Meet Recordings. And it'll load up any sessions that I have done. You can also rename these accordingly. These are timestamped. That's a nice feature. So here's my one that's on the 13th. And so what I could do is I could rename this as, and I could even include the specific time for that if I really wanted to. Now that I have that recording, I would be able to distribute it through my learning management system like Google Classroom and share it out with students. So that way, if they weren't able to participate in the live session, then they would be able to at least get to the recorded version. Thanks for watching.